Hello, and welcome to Stage, Screen, and In Between. I'm Helen. Today, I have the most fabulous guest for you, the amazing Johnny T. He sang with the Mystics from 1980 to 1995. Now, they recorded the song Hushabai, and he now has a one-man show that will knock your socks off. Hi, Johnny. Thank you for being here. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here, Helen. Thank you very much. Thank you. I saw your show the other night that Mickey B presented at the Belmore Theaters, and I was blown away. T tell me about that show. That was a great experience to come out to Long Island and uh, perform for a whole new audience, which was great. And uh, I actually was able to do about five or six different voices, which you heard yourself at the theater. Yes. Uh, he does Dean Martin. He does... Um, Everybody, name some of the people well, that, that you did that night. Yeah, cause that particular night we did Bobby Darren, Dean Martin, Sinatra, uh, Frankie Valli, Dion, Little Anthony, Paul Anka, Jerry Vale. <laughs> Just to name a few, and he can switch it up, you know. So name some of the songs that you did that night. Well, I did, uh, I did Mac the Knife by Bobby Darren. Right. I did My Way by Sinatra. I did Everybody Loves Somebody by Dean Martin. Uh, Pretend You Don't See Her by Jerry Vale. Uh, You're Just Too Good To Be True by Frankie Valli. And Donna the Prima Donna by Dion. Oh, I love that song when I heard that. Now, let's go back. You weren't always on stage singing. Weren't you involved with uh, finance in some way? Yes, I actually started my career. Well, actually, I started with a gr local group on Staten Island. But later on, working on Wall Street, I was introduced to the original bass singer of the Mystics, Al Contrera. And it was through Al, he was very instrumental at that time, back in 1978, there was a very big resurgence of the doo-wop with regard to Murray Kay shows and also Radio City, Royal New York doo-wop shows. Yeah, I remember Murray the K and the swinging soiree. Right, Helen, <laughs> right, right, right. And I was fortunate to audition with the group, and I got on the group in 1980, and I actually recorded with them in 1982 with the Ambient album. They had five major groups with the original lead singers perform. And I stayed with the group until I retired and moved to Naples, Florida in 1995. So now you basically, you spend your winters in Florida, and your plan is to come up here in the spring and summer and spend some time with us in New York and on Long Island and Staten Island, and yes. that's very exciting. Yes. It's been working out, it's actually about three years now that I come back, because naturally in, in Florida it's very, very busy. In fact, the season has shrunk to probably more like December, January, February, and March. So around the middle of April, uh, I come up to New York, and I've really gained a big audience up here, which is great. I started to perform all over, and fortunately, I perform at uh, different venues throughout the New York metropolitan area every week. And, and how the people love him. Right now, we're going to break for a clip, and you're going to see him actually like channel these legends because they are legends that he's, he's singing their songs. And you will see the audience's reaction. They just go wild for him. And, and you are fabulous. I even said to him when I saw him the other night, how do you do it? Because you really, really sound like these people. So you're gonna see for yourself. Hold on a minute, we're gonna show you. I have seen almost every one of Johnny T's shows. We are Johnny T groupies. We love him, he's a chameleon, he can do anybody. And when he does himself, we love him even better. Oh, I think he is great. We just absolutely love him. He puts on a great show, and it is a fun night, not to be missed. Johnny T is the greatest. I don't miss any of his concerts. Um, describing his voice, it's very difficult in one word. The only thing I could say, it's an experience. The man gives you chills down your spine and gives you tears in your eyes, gives you all that music supposed to do and he's the man of all voices i love johnny t ladies and gentlemen
Isn't that something? Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, and that's how I felt. You know, just like the audience. Where where have you been? Because I love seeing you. Yeah, I really enjoy it, like I said, and I've tried to develop a lot more voices. When I sang with the Mystics, we did a lot of rock and roll shows together, but then after moving to Naples, Florida, uh, naturally it was difficult to find guys to sing on the street corner with because that's not really an area like the New York metropolitan yeah. area. And uh, I started one night, I performed, and I did uh, a Dean Martin song. And one of the persons in the audience said, wow, it sounds, you sound like Dean Martin. Yeah. So from there, I started cultivating the other voices. And I think I'm up to about 40 now with different people. And I do a video sequence, as you saw at the Belmore Theater the other night. Everybody I perform, I have a video clip of that individual, whether it be a group, a single artist. Mm -hmm. And I think that really captivates the audience because the songs give them a great memory, but the video sequence really brings them back. That's what I was going to say. And especially in this day and age that everybody loves a video, he has the video of, of all these wonderful people. You have uh, Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin and Paul Anka, yeah. and there you are singing, and, and he sounds so much like them that like, how can he change his voice so quickly how can he do that and you have a great range you can hit some really high notes now does it take a lot for you to get ready for that uh no actually i like i said it's just repetitive listening to the song mm -hmm. and uh as i mentioned before with the video clips i've amassed over 1500 video clips so i have groups from the 60s 70s 80s then the individual artists the r&b artists that i do i even do disco you know whatever so we try to <laughs> who do you do in disco uh, actually, I do the Bee Gees. Oh, yeah, I do the Bee Gees. I do a lot of R&B stuff. I do a lot of Temptations, Motown. You know, the diversity is the key to, to performing with the audience. You know, you can have the greatest one-person impression, but with my particular show, I'll go through about 17 different artists during the course of a show, which people will come out and say, well, I like Bobby Darren, or I like, you know, Little Anthony, or I like The Platters, or I like Neil Diamond. So diversity is the key. So is it easy for you to remember t the words to all these songs? I try, but sometimes <laughs> if I don't, I make them up. But you know, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of songs. So sometimes. And, no, and what was cute too was uh, for certain songs, you you went to the audience and you you said, "Sing this part, sing this part," because you know the audience loves the songs and they love to be part of it. And that yeah. was very good. I love that part. Audience participation is key. You know, if you you can have a great voice, and sometimes there are guys that don't have a great voice, but they got a great personality. And people accept that and they enjoy that. And that, yeah. that's the whole thing. If you're enjoying yourself and you're entertaining the people and they're being entertained, there's always a great response. Yes. Now, um, you do things, good things for people because we were uh, at that event because part of the proceeds went to the Carol Baldwin Breast Cancer Foundation. Right. And uh, it was uh, Emil Stuccio and the classics were there. And so you were friends with Emil from going way back, yes. haven't you been? Yes. Actually, Emil sang with the Mystics for a period of time at the very end uh, juncture of the group. And then I left the group and actually then Al Contrera went and sang with Emil, oh. with the classics. Yeah. And the Mystics are still performing, they're doing very well. Yeah. So it's good to see everybody do well. Yeah, now um, what are some of your hobbies? I think that you were athletic, weren't you? Yeah, back early on in high school, uh, I actually played uh, college on a baseball scholarship. I was fortunate enough to be drafted by the Texas Rangers, but it was way too short at the time to play outfield. In fact, the scouts always used to laugh because they had me listed at like 5'11", 190 pounds, and I was more like 5'5", 140 pounds. So that was a fun, you know, fun thing. Oh, that's a good thing, isn't it? Oh, that's great. Yeah, but you know what? I think you found your calling here. This is a lot safer, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it's a lot more enjoyable. And like I said, it, it, I don't mind the driving around. Like, for instance, tonight uh, I'll be in the Bronx. Last night I was in New Jersey. Uh, and then tomorrow night, Saturday, I'll be back in Jersey, to North Jersey. So it's kind of great because I go to these venues, say, every six to seven weeks. Mm -hmm. 
So it's not a repetitious type thing. So there's probably about 25 different venues. So it's a, it's a nice thing because people look forward to seeing you again after five or six weeks. Yes, and not only that, but you play in in theater settings, but you also play in dinner theater, which I love. I love the idea that you can sit and be entertained and have a meal. And what do you prefer or do you not have a preference? I, I you know, I really don't have a preference. Uh, I mean, I do dinner theaters in Florida like, uh, you know, uh, Fort Myers uh the uh, Royal Palm Dinner Theater, and uh, also a lot of dinner shows here at the catering halls. Uh, I, don't, I don't really mind either one. I guess the easiest ones are the theater because I just bring my laptop with all the components on the laptop mm-hmm. and just plug it into the, the, the actual, into the projector and the audio, and I'm good to go. Now, as you were growing up, who were your singing idols? You know, I, I actually, my brother, who's younger than me, actually got me into the doo-wop type of singing. Uh, but I, you know... Naturally, growing up, uh, my mom and everybody always listened to Italian music. My mother's got a great voice. And so I listened to, you know, the Sinatras, the Dean Martins, and so forth. And then when I was introduced into the uh, rock and roll doo-wop phase, I really admired that. And then it just compounded when I got to sing with the Mystics. So you must have a lot of girls after you, I would imagine, because you're a handsome guy. He sings great. (laughs) He has a good following, right? Well, we try to keep the following in general, you know? We don't want to get in trouble. (laughs) But it's it's fun. It's fun. But I even love the the what you wear because this is like a shark skin suit. Am I correct? Yeah, we should, very know, hot yeah. in the fifties yeah. and early sixties. Also, I remember yes, the shark yes, skin yes. suits. Well, we try to play the role. You know? Yes, it's always good to try to play the role. People enjoy that. Now, um, you also do a thing. You have uh, the legends, and then you have some other thing where you hook up with a couple of other singers. You want to explain about that? Yeah, well, I've been pretty fortunate down in Florida doing a lot of different shows uh, regarding the theaters in Florida. Mm -hmm. And uh, been very fortunate uh, the last uh, two shows. uh, My uh, first show last March, uh, we did a show where I fronted the Brooklyn Bridge, which we did a tribute to Johnny Maestro. Uh And that was probably the most uh, exciting thing that I've done in a long time, to be able to go out and, and pay tribute. And we had over 900 people attend that show. And it was great. And now I'm doing another show this uh, coming up in two weeks from now where I have Jimmy Gallagher coming from The Passions. I work I work a lot with Jimmy in Florida and the Infernos Band, which is phenomenal. And also with regard to the tributes, there's going to be uh, Richie Rosado, the former lead singer of the Duprees. Wow. He's got an excellent voice. And um, myself. And uh, we also have a group called Just Friends on the group. Larry Chance and the Earls will be there. John Coos from The Excellence is going to MC. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful show. You know what? We're going to break again and show you one more clip. <laughs>
Okay. It, you know, and, and let me tell you, as good as these clips are, there's nothing like seeing Johnny T in person because you know how it is with live theater. You have to see him in person. It really just resonates right right to your heart. Now, Johnny, if someone wants to uh, reach you, what is the best way? And do you have a website or are you on Facebook? Yes, I'm, I'm on Facebook under my own name, John Tarangelo. And also I have a, a pretty elaborate website which gives you a lot of detailed information. And that website is johnnytunes.com. It's J-O-H-N-N-Y-T-U-N-E-S.com. Well, I didn't have any trouble spelling the tunes, but spell Tarangelo for me. <laughs> well, it's T-A-R-A-N-G-E-L-O, but that's why I was going as Johnny T. Helen. It makes it a little bit easy. I love it. It's very, very catchy. It's very, very catchy. So now we hope to see more of you on Long Island. And also, you're involved in charities. And so if, if, if somebody, you know, appealed to you that they wanted you to sing for something, would you be willing to do things like that? Yes, always willing to do something like that. In fact, when Mickey B, the Prince of Rock and Roll, called me up at the Belmore Theater, I was very willing to come out and do something for the Breast Cancer Society. Uh, yeah, I try to make myself, if I'm not working, as available as possible for any any type of a group. Uh, I do quite a bit for for autistic children in Florida and uh, a lot of the cancer victims and wherever, you know, whatever be needed. Like I said, I have God has given me a gift and I try to share it to as many people as I can to help them. You do have a gift. You have such a vocal range, and you have such a nice mellow tone to your lower register. And when you hit the higher register, I mean, it's as smooth as can be. You you really are gifted, and it's wonderful of you to share. It really is. Well, it's my pleasure. Like I said, you people who are blessed with some should give to people who aren't. Yes, and you you also tailor your shows to even more contemporary sounds, like you said, disco and uh, yeah, whatever it might be. Although you're you're more in the fifties and sixties. Yeah. But I, I can go back and do like some of the old age homes that I do. I I do Wild Jolson and people oh, like that. That's good. To so know. we we go back, you know, and uh, a lot of different people. Uh, that's wonderful. Well. I'm so glad that you could spend some time with us, and you have to come and see Johnny T in person. He's going to put up dates on his website, right, of where you can be seen, and you could see also more footage. He has so much footage on YouTube of shows that he's done. Yeah, so enjoy. Like I said, uh, go to the website, johnnytunes.com, and take a look at the dates. If you're in the area, feel free to come out, enjoy the show, enjoy the food. <laughs> This was the hit song, ladies and gentlemen, with something like this. Hush a bye, hush a bye. Oh, my darling, don't you cry. Guardian angels up above, take care of me. 